now let's bring in the nation's astronomer at large, Fred Watson. Fred, good to see you. Thanks for your time. This is quite the moment, wasn't it? The landing. Tell us a bit about this mission and, and just how tricky it is to make something like that a success. It is a, an extraordinary achievement. You're absolutely right. Only the fourth nation to soft land a spacecraft on the surface of the moon, but the first nation uh, to put a spacecraft down near the moon's south pole. And that might sound like just a question of geography, but it's all about the way you structure the orbit, the orbital dynamics of the spacecraft. You have to place it in the right uh, orbit and then get it to do what you want to at the right time with the rocket motors firing just uh, properly to bring the spacecraft down to a soft touchdown, as has happened in this case. And why are we so interested in the south pole of the moon? What are you expecting they'll find there? Uh, we've got two weeks of uh, research by this uh, little, uh, well, it's the rover. There's uh, three parts of the spacecraft. One is still in orbit. The lander, Vikram, is what touched down. And over the next day or so, we'll see the rover itself being deployed, uh, which has a, an expected lifetime of one lunar day or half a lunar day, which is uh, two weeks. So uh, what we're hoping to see from that uh, are measurements that will demonstrate quite conclusively what we've suspected for a long time, that there is water ice uh, in some of these deep uh, craters near the moon's south pole, places where the sun either never rises at all or just skirts above the horizon. Uh, Ice, of course, is a valuable commodity in space because water can be dissociated into hydrogen and oxygen to make rocket fuel. So it's free rocket fuel if you can find it. OK, right. So for those who dream of setting up colonies on the moon, for an example, that would be a big deal, right? Colony is not a word I like to use in, in connection with space flight, uh, but I can imagine a time when we have a permanent uh, occupation of humans on the moon. Uh, and that's the sort of thing, you know, it, it may well be that places like the moon become a little bit like Antarctica is now, where you, you really devote it to scientific research. Uh, and that is certainly the case with the moon. I can imagine that uh, the, the supply of water that we might find there would absolutely encourage, uh, a, a, you know, a, a situation where you've got a base which is constantly occupied by humans uh, doing research and maybe finding some of the resources that the moon might have to offer us one day. OK, so India can be congratulated on this, but Russia didn't have as much luck with its recent attempt, did it? What went wrong for them? Yes, it's very unfortunate, and it sounds as though uh, that the you know they they managed to snatch failure from the jaws of success because the uh, the Luna twenty five spacecraft was on track to put a lander down near the South Pole. It was uh, a, a question of bringing the spacecraft down from orbit around the Moon uh, and doing it at the right speed. And unfortunately, what happened was that one of the braking rockets, which was supposed to burn for about 87 seconds, actually burned for more like 125 seconds. And that slowed it down too quickly, uh, with the uh, result that the spacecraft attempted to land about 15 kilometers below the moon's surface, which is not a good idea uh, when you're trying to put something down softly on the moon's surface. So a really unfortunate accident, probably, maybe a software error, maybe something that happened to the motor itself. We don't know yet. Okay, well, I assume the US is watching and learning from all of this. Is NASA still on track for its planned moon landings? How are preparations going for those next yeah, Apollo missions that we're all looking forward to? Indeed, they are. They're, they're, they're the Artemis missions now. Apollo was back in the 60s and 70s. Artemis. Artemis Sorry, uh, Artemis, of course. <laughs> Quite, it's quite all right. No, it, it, no Artemis is a uh, in Greek mythology a relative of Apollo, so that's fine. Um, the um, the plans uh, call for towards the end of next year an, an orbital flight around the moon by four astronauts, including the first person of color and the first woman uh, who will fly around the moon in what's called Artemis 2. Artemis 3 is the mission that will land astronauts on the moon, maybe late 2025, more like 2026. But everybody is watching uh, with bated breath, and it seems that all things are progressing as expected. Professor Fred Watson, always appreciate you joining us with your insights and expertise. Thanks so much. Great pleasure. Many thanks.